here's the question for today. How well does a Ford Racing stroker motor respond to a set of Ford Racing cylinder heads? Let's find out. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a cylinder head upgrade on a 392 Ford Racing stroker motor. The motor originally came with a set of Ford Racing GT40X heads. We replaced those with a set of Ford Racing Z304 heads. So how well did the stroker motor respond to the cylinder head upgrade? Let's get to the results. This test was run on a 392 Ford Racing Stroker crate motor. It was originally rated at 430 horsepower, but this motor, <laughs> I ran about a trillion tests on this thing. The guys from Ford Racing supplied this to the guys at West Tech, and I used the heck out of this thing. I ran all kinds of stuff, cylinder heads, camshafts, carburetors, intake manifolds, nitrous, you name it. I mean, I tested the heck out of this. I'm sure I ran more stuff. I, I probably put more laps on this thing than everybody else combined that used this motor because a lot of other magazine guys went there and used that stuff that West Tech had, but I'm sure I put a ton of stuff on it. Um, as a matter of fact, we used it so much that we eventually heard it, I think, doing a blower or something. I mean, this thing was, this was more than a decade ago. It was a long time ago, but we ran this thing and I, somebody ended up hurting it. I don't think it was when I was doing one of my tests. It may have been, <laughs> but we had to bore this thing 40 over instead of 30 over, which is the way that it came because this 392 was originally a stroke 351 Windsor. It had a 3.85 uh, stroker crank with it. Came one from the Ford Racing Crate Motor. It was like 9.7 to 1. It had a 4030 bore, but because we heard it, we put a 4040 bore in it, and we put a forged piston with valve reliefs in it. And the compression was only a little bit higher than what it was just from the change in displacement, basically, from having it be 40 over instead of 30 over. This thing was originally equipped from Ford Racing the way that they supplied it. It came with a single plane Victor Jr. intake manifold and a set of GT40 X heads. It also came with a comp cam that comp did for the guys at Ford Racing. It was an Extreme Energy 282 HR cam. That cam was a 565-574 lift split, a 232 240 degree duration split at 112 degree lobe separation angle. And as I said, I like this crate motor because it came, it ran good, it, we beat the heck out of it, and, and we never had any problems with it until we did something dumb and ended up hurting the motor. So what I wanted to do back then was test the then new Z304 heads from Ford Racing. See, Ford had a number of different heads available for the small block Ford for the Windsor family, and but they were basically the GT40 lineup, the GT40P, the standard GT40 aluminum head, the GT40 X head, which came on this motor, and then they introduced the, the Z head, which was a big step up from the GT40. We'll go over the specs on all the heads and talk about that, but um, this is what we did with this. We started out with the GT40X head, but the other change that I made to this crate motor before we ran it is we replaced the single plane Victor Jr. intake with a dual plane RPM air gap. And given the RPM range, we, we only ran this thing to around 6,000 RPM with this combination, 6,100 or so. And given that RPM range, the dual plane was probably a better combination. We also ran a 750 carburetor. Let me know if you guys think that it was a big enough carburetor for a 500 horsepower motor. I'm sure I'll get comments about that, that I need an 850 or 950 or 1050, that kind of thing. But we also ran it with inch and three quarter long tube headers, kind of the Fox chassis, inch and three quarter hooker super comps that they always ran on stuff. And back then they were kind of new. I think we've actually worn those headers out now. I think we will actually have to replace them. But in all honesty, it's been... I, I had to have had those for at least 15 years running on stuff. And, you know, it's time that they wore out. They've been run on every Ford that we've ever run, at least every Windsor deal. And it's been a lot of tests. So we put an MSD distributor in this thing because it doesn't come with one. And we hooked this thing up, ran it on the dyno, and run with the GT40X heads and that camshaft, the dual plane intake, and 750. This thing made 478 horsepower and 505 foot-pounds of torque. Again, I like the fact that it was, you know, very torquey. Being a stroker, that's kind of a good deal. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed the Z304 heads. Before getting the results of our Z304 head test, while we had this thing on the dyno, as I said, once I have something on the dyno, I try to run as many tests as I can. And this was a perfect example. We run a ton of tests on this particular combination. And one of the things I did, because it's so simple when you have something on the dyno on a carbureted application, is we put a nitrogen kit on this. It's kind of what I call pushing the easy button because if you put nitrous on there or the tune is right, I mean, you just push a button and 
you're instantly adding like how much ever horsepower you add you put in the jetting for the nitro so we installed a simple plate system under the carburetor and we actually ran this both with a zex perimeter plate and with an an you know a conventional nos kind of plate and in all honesty the difference between those two plates is very minimal. Um, what I find is that the big difference in the power supplied by the nitrous kit is more a function of the jetting that you use in the kit, the solenoid size if you're getting near the maximum flow of the solenoid, and more importantly, obviously, the pressure and, the, um, and how full the bottle is. So if all of that is right, you'll get the power output supplied by the jetting. If you increase the bottle pressure by heating the bottle up, you can get more flow and add more power. But I just wanted to show you quickly on the easy button here when we, when we added nitrous to this thing. It worked out really well. So here's what we did when we hit it with a, I, this was like 125 shots. So the power output jumped from 478 up to 607. You know, nice, easy gain. We hit this thing down around 4,000 RPM. Uh, we had good power. It started to get a little bit rich out here. And I actually think on the GT40X heads also, we were probably running into a uh, valve control issue with the springs that they supplied with that crate motor. So here's an easy setup. You know, crate motor, we obviously went uh, 40 over, but I don't think that that would affect anything. Crate motor, headers, good carburetor, good tune, and then add nitrous to it. And you've got over 600 horsepower, and that's enough That's enough to have some serious fun in, the, in a street car because this thing made over 650 foot-pounds. So now let's find out what happened when we did our head swap. After running our nitrous test, it was time to swap on the Z304 heads from Ford Racing. And this was very early on in the testing with the Z304 heads. They came incomplete basically we had to assemble them we had to get the valves and everything and we installed a set of 20216 uh, valve package and if you take a look at i'm going to go ahead and insert the flow numbers up here and you guys can take a look at them but ford racing promised that these heads flowed about 275 and so i airflow tested them on the flow bench at west tech and we we flowed them on a 4030 bore and they were almost spot on uh our, our flow numbers kind of correlated what theirs were. Ours were a little bit lower in the mid-lift numbers than what they provided. But again, that's just a different bench and a different person testing them and stuff. But these things flowed quite a bit more than a GT40X head. A GT40X head was probably more like in the 235 to 240 range maybe. And these heads flowed 275. So we're up quite a bit in potential CFM. And I like the fact that the 275 numbers came at 600 and, six, and 650 lift, which is kind of right in the area where you'd be running, a, you know, kind of a good performance cam. Um, good numbers also at 550, which was 271. So that's right in the good part of the peak lift that you'd get, like on our Extreme Energy 282 cam. But if we look, so I'll go ahead and keep the specs up there for a while so you guys can take a look at the airflow numbers. Exhaust flow is also good, 223 CFM. Good intake to exhaust flow relationship for my math guys out there are going to do that kind of correlation. If we take a look at a comparison between the, the Z head and the GT40X head, the GT40X head had a 178cc intake port, a 62cc exhaust port, and they could be had with either 64 or 58 cc chambers. Uh, and I need someone to let me know. I honestly can't remember. I don't have it in the notes which head that that original, um, the crate motor from Ford Racing came with. I think that it came with a 64 cc chamber. But if it came with a 58 cc chamber and the Z head was a 63 cc chamber, either way, it's equal. It's either the equivalent of the GT40X or it actually has a slightly bigger chamber. So the gains that we'll see from the head, either way are really good. <laughs> now the Z304 head had a 204 cc chamber, I meant 204 cc intake port, an 85 cc exhaust port. And as I mentioned, uh, a 63 cc chamber, it flowed 275. It had a 202.16 valve package on it the way that we tested it compared to a 194, 154 for the GT40X. We um, installing the heads also did require an adapter plate on the exhaust port so that we could mount our, uh, our the same hooker headers on this thing. And we also had the, the heads were supplied with a, a Ford Racing supplied the guide plates for this. We had to put the screw in studs. 
We also had to use a non bolt down rocker like we used on the GT40 X heads, but it was a 1 6 uh, ratio aluminum roller rocker from Comp Cam. So we didn't change the ratio, but we did have to change the rocker. We obviously kept the same camshaft. It did require a quite a bit longer push rod on the Z head. We went up to 8.1 inches on the, um, on the Z head. So here's what happened after we got all of that done. We obviously ran it with the same carburetor, same intake manifold. We adjusted the timing until the thing didn't make any more power. Here's what happened after we put the Z head on there. This is what happened when we put the Z head on. We The power jumped up from 478 and 504 foot pounds all the way up to 522 horsepower and 520 nine foot-pounds of torque so we we're actually making more torque than horsepower which was very interesting <laughs> but part of that is the dual plane intake rather than the single plane that this this uh, crate motor came with but as you can see the nice thing about this head swap is that it picked up power through the entire rpm range and picked up a lot at the peak picked up um, torque down low so it was actually a good worthwhile swap and it just goes to show you that a 392 inch stroker motor obviously needs more cylinder head than that gt40x can supply the head was definitely holding it back and putting a better head on it you know allowed us to make more power and i know that your question now and go ahead and make the comment and i'll wait did you run the nitrous on it now after you did the head swap? I did not. Again, we just didn't do it. Um, I probably should have, but nitrous works the same way on every combination. If you add a 125 horsepower shot on this 478 horsepower combination and then do the same thing on this 522 horsepower combination, it adds the same amount of power. So nitrous always does the same thing regardless of your combination. How much ever nitrous you supply, that's how much power it had. So you guys, you guys can go in and draw your own curve. So here's what happened when we added these heads. And we have run other heads on the 392. And we saw big gains from other kinds of heads like airflow research and trip flow and that kind of stuff. Because this combination needs more head flow. Let's get to our conclusion. Looking back at tests like this makes me want to go to West Tech, dig out this Ford Racing Crate motor, dust it off, and run some more tests on it. Now, I tested the living heck out of this thing. I tested all kinds of stuff, including this cylinder head test. So I want to know, what did you guys think about this cylinder head upgrade on our Ford Racing 392 stroker. I'll tell you why I like this motor so much and why I think it's a good combination to run a cylinder head test just like this. If you run this test on a smaller 302, we've got cylinder heads like these Z304 that will support over 500 horsepower, probably more like 550 or 600. If we run that test on a smaller 302 that only makes 400 horsepower, it's not going to show very much power because the head works, but the combination can't take advantage of what the head flow has to offer. That's why I like this kind of intermediate size stroker motor. The 392 is good for testing these 500 plus horsepower cylinder head combinations. In fact, I used this motor on one of the parts of the big cylinder head test I did for Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forwards back in the day when we tested like 30 different sets of cylinder heads. And don't worry, I have that video coming up. I'm putting it all together. It's actually run in four parts. So there's a ton of information on a ton of different cylinder heads. But this Z304 head upgrade on the 392 stroker worked out very well. Much better than the GT40X head. In fact, forward racing, <clears throat> excuse me, offered this head later on as a crate motor with this 392. Maybe because of this testing. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Do all that stuff. I got more testing coming up.